Let's look at the internal dorsal region of the body and we can appreciate some muscles here as well as a nice pair of plexuses. And so let's take a look at the muscles first. This particular muscle is going to be called the quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum has its origin over here at the iliac crest and its insertion is going to be this last rib. This one, just like the abdominal muscles, is going to help to flex the trunk. If we take a look at this muscle here, this long muscle, kind of a teres looking muscle, although we don't give it the name teres, um, is the psoas major and minor. We can see the tendon of the psoas minor on top of the psoas major. And so this is the psoas minor, and beneath it is the psoas major. The psoas major and minor are going to be involved again in flexion of the trunk, uh, and you can see that their origin is going to be essentially associated with the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. The insertion, however, is going to be uh, shared with this muscle called the iliacus, and that insertion is going to be the lesser trochanter of the femur. This makes this a high stepper muscle. The action of this muscle is going to be flexion of the thigh at the hip. So here's the iliacus muscle. It's going to originate in the iliac fossa. And again, it shares a common insertion with the psoas muscles. And so that insertion, once again, is going to be the lesser trochanter of the femur. This muscle group is referred to as the iliopsoas group. And it is the only group that essentially inserts on the lesser trochanter. Because this one is not associated with the uh, lumbar vertebrae, it only is involved in flexion of the thigh at the hip. It has nothing to do with flexion of the spine. All right, so now let's take a look at the lumbar plexus. And of course, we can use these muscles as landmarks for the lumbar plexus. All right, now let's take a look at the lumbar plexus. The lumbar plexus is a series of several nerves, as you might guess, and we're gonna begin with this one. There's a lazy Y that's created by this root, and notice that we have the upper part as the iliohypogastric nerve. Now, just in general, the iliohypogastric nerve is going to innervate the abdominal muscles. The one below it is the ilioinguinal nerve. And of course you might guess this is involved in the groin area, which of course it is. Traveling down here is the genital femoral nerve. Genital femoral nerve. So the genital femoral nerve is also associated with the external genitalia, including the scrotum of the male and the vulva of the female. Followed by this nerve that's traveling across the iliacus muscle. This nerve, of course, is going to be the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. And as the name implies, it's going to innervate the skin of the lateral hip. Take a look at this one crawling out from underneath the psoas muscles, right? Psoas major, and that is the femoral nerve. Femoral nerve is the major nerve for the quadriceps femoris muscle. And finally, we have the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve is here and here. The obturator nerve is involved in the innervation of the adductor muscles, ADD, adductor muscles such as adductor longus, adductor magnus, adductor brevis. All right, well, how are we going to remember that? Well, let's take a look. We have iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, traveling over the quadratus lumborum, traveling over the top of the psoas is the genital femoral, Traveling across the iliacus is the lateral femoral cutaneous. Crawling out from underneath the psoas is the femoral nerve. And then traveling downward most medially, in this case, is going to be the obturator nerve. So, let's try this. I hope I get lasagna from Omar. I hope, iliohypogastric, I, ilioinguinal, get genital femoral, lasagna, lateral femoral cutaneous, from femoral, omar, obturator.